Welcome back everyone. Today I will recap the 2023 Vietnamese horror film named The Unborn Soul. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. According to statistics, each year average, Vietnam has more than 300,000 abortion cases. 60 to 70% of them are students. Noticeably, abortions at 12 weeks gestation account for nearly 80%. At the beginning of the movie, we see a doctor asking Nu to think it through before making up her mind, as this is the life of a human. Nu and her sister Thao decide to abort the baby, and then we see her in the operation theater getting her abortion done. Thao gets disturbed seeing the procedure and runs out of the theater, and then she gets shocked hearing the voice of a baby crying. We then see Nu performing some ritual for the peace of the people in a house. Only then she gets terrified seeing a woman standing beside her, and she asks her mistress why she is wearing all white at night. Bao says her husband Tung doesn't like these things and asks her to clean them up right away. Then suddenly a strong wind starts blowing, which Thao gets scared, and Nu requests that spirit to forgive her mistress. Everything calms down there as she apologizes, but then suddenly the wind blows again, and Nu says they accepted the offering and that means they forgave her. Thao says it's just the wind and begins leaving there, but she hears Nu asking the spirit if it is a child, as it likes swinging on the swing and eating sweets. The next day, Tung returns home from a business trip, and Nu welcomes him, and here we learn that Nu is his relative and her mother entrusted her to him. He gives her a gift box and asks her to bring it to his room. Thao then meets Tung, and he gives her a gift, and here we learn that today is their fourth wedding anniversary. Later, while they were celebrating their anniversary, Nu says God created such a perfect couple, and she really looks up to their happiness but it's a pity that they still do not have a child. This makes them both upset, and Thao asks Nu to take care of the kitchen, but Nu starts mumbling something even while leaving there. This causes Thao's drink to spill, and she says she will go and change. Now when she goes to the washroom, she remembers the moment when she had gone to get her sister's abortion done, and only then she notices a girl passing by from outside. Thao thinks she is hallucinating and she comes out and closes the window, but then the girl passes by her again, which scares her a bit. She then hears a baby laughing, and she gets shocked to see a doll on the chair that says mommy come and cuddle me. Now as Thao is checking the doll, suddenly Tung asks her if she liked his gift. Thao says she was startled by the sudden sound from the doll. Tung tells her that this doll can cry, smile, say mommy, and play music with just noise or touch, and if she doesn't like the sounds, there is a button behind it to turn them off. We then see Dr. Fuong, who works in a maternity hospital and performs abortions. Her co-worker Ngok gives her a Rubik's Cube and asks her to give it to her son Min. She says she visited him the other day, and he told her to sing so he could record it and play it back when she cannot come to visit him. Fuong then visits Min, who is suffering from cancer. He gets overjoyed to see the gift from Ngok and tells Fuong that he has a gift for her. He shows her a drawing made by him, in which he is on a beach with her and they are flying kites. Only then his nose starts bleeding and he faints, and Fuong gets scared seeing this and tries to wake him up. Meanwhile, Thao visits a weird building to see her sister Nu. She finds that many women are doing some kind of strange ritual out of their apartments. She goes to Nu's apartment and calls her out, but hears a strange noise from inside. She tries to peek in and gets scared seeing a baby running there. Only then Nu comes there from behind her and asks her why did she come here. Thao asks her why she is not answering her mother and ignoring her too. Somewhere else, Aunt Thuyen reaches her orphanage, where a lady tells her that she is leaving tomorrow. Thuyen says she has no problem with that but their orphanage has been dealing with all kinds of difficulties, so if she leaves, there will be no one to breastfeed this baby. The lady says she cannot stay for that long, and she cannot take her home either, as her family won't accept her. Aunt Thuyen asks her to breastfeed her for just one more week, and then she can leave. Now while returning home, Thao remembers the conversation with Nu. She asks Nu if she put an altar in her room, and even burn votive paper money. Nu says since the abortion, whenever she closes her eyes, she sees blood and hears a baby cry. She thinks the baby resents her. Thao tell her not to talk nonsense, as the fetus was just four months old, and it was lifeless. Nu asks her how does she know how someone feels that's had an abortion. It haunts her, and keeps her stuck in nightmares. Thao asks her does she blame her for taking her to the hospital, to which she says she only blames herself for doing such a heartless thing. Thao gets furious and says she should regret getting pregnant while she was a third-year student, and not after having the abortion. She tells her that she is dependent on her husband, so she can only help her with college fees, and cannot cover her whole life. Abortion was the only way to settle everything. Nu says her head right now is full of baby's legs and arms that are torn apart, and thinking about that, she can never forgive herself. She wished she had never listened to her even once. Thao says in that case, she should remind herself not to make this same mistake ever again, and not blame anyone else. Now before leaving, she tells her that if she dares to do it, 
then don't regret it. Only then the altar falls down and Thao notices a girl ghost sitting in her car, which she gets scared and stops the car, but when she looks back, she finds no one there. Now when she returns home, the lights start flickering and she hears a girl laughing. She then gets terrified seeing a girl instead of a doll sitting in a chair, which again turns into the doll. Thao immediately tries to turn off the doll and only then Nu comes there and tells her that electricians are fixing the power line in their area. Thao asks her why she came here, to which she says Mr. Tung asked her to cook bird's nest soup for her as he will be home late. Thao then asks Nu if she touched the doll, to which she say no. Outside, Nu lights up candles and then suddenly a gust of wind blows which makes her very scared and she says it must be them and when she leaves there we see that girl standing behind her. The door of the house then opens on its own and we see that girl standing beside Thao's bed. The girl tries to wake up Thao and we see a baby crawling toward her bed. Thao wakes up and gets horrified seeing that girl and that baby, and she tries to drive it away, but only then Tung comes there and wakes her up and asks her what happened. Thao finds that doll on her bed, due to which she gets terrified and says why is it still here, and then throws it away. Now the next day, Thao throws that doll in a dustbin, and after she leaves, we see the dustbin moving and the doll crying. On the other hand, Aunt Thuan visits a hospital, and Ngok hands over two fetuses to her saying they are over six months old. She also asks her to be careful as they just changed the security guard. Only then Fuong comes there, but she leaves there without saying anything. Now when Ngok goes back to Fuong, she asks Ngok to be careful, because if anyone finds out, it will be complicated. She then tells her that she is visiting men and paying his medical fees. We then see Aunt Thuan and his son burying that fetus asking to forgive their parents. Her son says people should let others raise their kids if they cannot raise them. Thuan says it's not their first time doing this and she wishes they don't have to do this. Now that night, when Tung returns home, he finds some offerings outside his house. He calls out Nu and asks her what is this, and says he told her not to worship here. He scolds her saying don't think she can do whatever just because they are related. This makes her furious and she kicks the offering saying she did not prepare this tray. She then apologizes to the spirit saying she was wrongly blamed so she could not control her feelings. We then see Fuon with Min where he says one day, when he cannot be with her, don't be so sad. He wants her to smile just like in the picture he drew. Fuong says the doctor told her that he just need to hang on a little more and after the chemotherapy, he will get well soon. Min says, when he gets well, he wants to go back to school. Go to the beach and fly kites. Fuong says she will take him to the beach when he gets well and asks him to get some sleep. Later that night, Nu hears a piano sound and a kid giggling, and when she comes out to check, she finds a baby crawling in the house. Seeing this, she gets a little scared and starts climbing the stairs following it, but then she feels that she was just hallucinating. Now as she starts going back, she hears that sound again, and as she bent over and looks through her legs, she gets haunted by the ghost, due to which she gets terrified and falls down the stairs. The next day, she tells Thao about last night's incident, but she doesn't believe her. Nu says they got mad at her because she shattered their offering tray the other day. But the creepier thing is that she did not prepare that tray. Thao says she made that offering tray because she always say, with prayer, there is holiness, so she followed her. Nu says that's true, but it's too late. Only then the door gets shut and they both get scared and Nu says there are spirits in this house. They then visit a psychic who tells Thao that she has been followed by a powerful unborn spirit and it could be her sister's child. She led its mother to the abortion, so it bears a grudge and wants to harm her. Thao asks him what should she do now, to which he gives her a talisman to stick on the house's door as it will scare the spirit away and remember to give it an offering. He then asks her for her hair and blood to cut the link between them, so that it will no longer follow her. Now the next day, Thao tells Nu that from now on, this household will be safe and sound. She then eats a sour fruit and says it tastes good, to which Nu says she looks strange these days. Only then Tung comes there and taunts Nu saying she looks more like the mistress and asks her to pay his wife's salary. They then visit a hospital where the doctor tells them that Thao is seven weeks pregnant and they both get overjoyed knowing this. On the other hand, Fuong visits Min and she finds that the kid next to his bed is gone. The nurse tells her that Min hasn't eaten since this morning and asks her to talk to him. This breaks Fuong and she begins crying badly. Meanwhile, Tung brings lots of toys and other items for his future child and only then he notices that the sticker is pasted outside his house. He then shows Thao the baby's room and tells Nu that he will increase her salary this month. Later that evening, Thao hears the baby giggling and when she goes there to check, she finds that all the toys are scattered there. Thao gets shocked to see this and only then she gets terrified seeing the crib moving on its own. Thao stops the crib and the lights in the room begin to flicker and she hears a doll's voice. She then finds the doll behind the mirror and only then the ghost of that unborn child starts crawling around her, which makes Thao very scared, and then it enters her stomach. 
Thao starts screaming in fear, and Tung wakes her up and asks her what she saw. Thao runs away from there and goes to check the room, and finds that the room is in normal condition, but she gets scared seeing the doll there. She asks Nu why is the doll still here, to which Nu says she brought it back. Thao throws that doll on the floor, and asks Nu to throw it away. Tung tries to calm her down and asks her what happened, to which she says she had nightmares. The next morning, Tung tell her to take some rest, and he will be back to take her to the doctor this afternoon. Thao says she doesn't have to and she will go with Nu instead. After he leaves, Thao gets shocked to see that the sticker is not there anymore. She goes to Nu and asks her did she remove the talisman she stuck at the door, to which Nu says she knows nothing. Meanwhile, Tung searches for that sticker and finds that it's an anti-unborn soul's talisman. Back to the house, Thao goes to the baby's room to check if the doll has returned, but finds that it's not there. Now while she is leaving, she feels some movement in her tummy and gets terrified seeing that soul there. Nu comes there hearing her scream and asks her what happened, but Thao just keeps crying. Later, Tung returns home and asks her how she is feeling now, to which she says she is fine. The baby kicked, so she was startled, and since it's their first baby, she has no experience with this. Tung asks her if she is afraid of something, to which she says no. He then shows her that talisman and asks her what this is, and who made her believe these things. Thao says this is a lucky talisman and it's from Aunt Ba. Nu tells them they are having a child, so Aunt Ba sent it to protect them. Tung says it is an unborn soul talisman and asks her why she uses this kind of talisman. Now here she reveals that she took Nu to the hospital to abort. She thought it was the best way for her, but she didn't know that the unborn soul will follow her. Tung says while they both were expecting to have a baby, she told her to have an abortion and asks her how could she do such a horrible thing. The next day she again visits that psychic, who tells her that the soul is trying to reincarnate into her womb and take revenge. It will follow her and haunts her forever. Her husband's business is just the beginning, and after that, it will wreak havoc in her family and completely destroy her life, because she took its life. She then goes to the hospital to abort the child, where Aunt Thuin finds her and tells her that she is from the Little Angel Orphanage. She requests her not to abort the baby, and if she wants, she can help her keep it and raise the baby. Thao asks her to stay away from her, to which she shows her the fetuses that are freshly pulled out of the womb. They retrieve them from clinics like this and bury them properly to comfort them. She says if she dares to seek an abortion, then she can look at them at least once. Thao feels sick seeing them and vomits there, and Aunt Thuin says she hopes this miserable child will make her change her decision. Now that evening, Tung talks to his doctor, who tells him that depression during pregnancy is quite popular, and during this, the family should be by her side to make sure she feels comfortable. Otherwise, it would affect the baby. Tung then returns home and comforts her, and tells her that he wants her to forget the past, and not believe in talismans or superstition. He knows this is a very tough time for her, since it's her first time being a mother, and he will always be by her side. Now that night, Thao sees a dream, in which she and Tung and happily playing with their daughter. The next day, Thao watches news about the psychic, that he got arrested for spreading superstition and appropriation of property by telling fortunes and selling talismans. Tung comes there and turns off the TV, and tells Thao that she is not allowed to watch unhealthy channels. On the other hand, that woman comes to Aunt Thuan and says she breastfed her baby one more week and let her continue to raise her. Aunt Thuan gets happy to know that she changed her mind. Meanwhile, we see Thao and Nu at a temple, where she had made a memorial tablet for her baby, so it can hear Buddhist scripture every day and can rest in peace and transcend soon. Thao also apologizes and says now she knows that she was so wrong, and it's all her fault. She begs him to them live in peace and not haunt her anymore. And if he is really here, can they be mother and child? On the other hand, Fuong surprises Min with a kite, which he gets overjoyed to see and thanks her mother for it. She then tells him that they will fly the kite here for now, and when he will get well, they will go to the beach and fly kites just like he has always wanted. We then see that Tung and Thao are again happily enjoying their life, and Nu doing good deeds by helping in old age homes and orphanages. Hai and Aunt Thawne are happy as they are not getting any calls from the hospital and they have nothing to do. However, we see that Fuong is performing an abortion again, and during this, she remembers the doctor telling her that Min's condition is getting worse, so she and her family should prepare for the worst. Now when she comes out of the operation theater, she gets a call from the hospital and they inform her that Min has passed away. On the other hand, we see Tung and Theo in a mall when she says she needs to go to the ladies' room. Now in the washroom, she meets a girl, seeing whom she gets very scared and starts leaving from there. But that girl says it's been a long time and asks her to forgive her. Thao turns towards her and says she doesn't want to see her ever again. Now here a flashback is shown, where the girl had taken her on a trip by lying that it was a team building trip, but there were only men there. The girl says they are all colleagues and not strangers, and she knows she is single, so she arranged this opportunity for her. She says she can just choose one, and dump him when she gets bored. Now that night they all have a lot of drinks, 
and taking advantage of the opportunity, all those men sexually assault her. Tung finds her screaming and tries to wake her up, and she says it hurts. They then notice blood marks on her dress, and they both get scared seeing this. He takes her to the hospital, where the doctor tell him that she is stable now. He did a general checkup, and he can take her home after the transfusion. He tells him that his wife had an abortion before, so the lining of the uterus is thin, so it's hard to keep the baby, and his baby has Down syndrome, so she will have severe disabilities. He suggests to him that he should not keep the baby and asks him to discuss it with his wife. Now on the way back home, Thao tries to explain to him that she was raped by three men, and when she got pregnant, she didn't even know who the father was. She didn't want anyone to know about this and she didn't want to remember it, until she met him. He loved and protected her, and she thought she just needed to stay quiet, bury in the past, and leave her present life to the fullest. Tung says the woman he has loved so much for so long is the one who has lied to him time after time. If only she had been more thoughtful, their baby would not have turned out that bad. She says she didn't go to the checkup because she was afraid Dr. Bao would find out that she had an abortion. Tung says it's too late and she must abort it. Thao begs to forgive her past and have mercy on their child, to which he says it breaks his heart deciding to let the child go. Only then Tung loses control of his car and hits the car on a pole. She then wakes up in her bed and when she comes out, she finds that Nu is crying. She thinks that Tung has died in that accident and she becomes very sad due to this and blames herself for everything. We then see her with a girl, who takes her to the graveyard behind the little angel orphanage. She shows her a grave saying she lives here. Thao gets scared and begins leaving, but stops when the girl calls her mommy. She says she has been waiting for her for so long, and Thao realizes that it's the child she aborted a few years back and she is her daughter. The girl says she never had the chance to become a child, which is why she is very sad. It's cold and dark out here and she is so scared. She says now she has met her, so love her a lot. Thao asks her how she found her, to which she says ever since she aborted her, she has always been by her side. But she knew she was scared of her and didn't want to see her, so she was angry at her. Thao apologizes to her saying she was not brave enough to keep her. The girl tells her not to cry as she is not angry at her anymore, but now she won't be able to be with her anymore and this is the last time they are meeting. She has stayed here for a long time, so now she has to go, as she doesn't resent her anymore. She asks her to give her a name as she doesn't want to be unnamed, to which she names her Thuong. Now after a while, Aunt Thuon comes there and finds Thao crying over Thuong's grave. And here it is revealed that Thuong had brought the aunt to the hospital so that she could stop Thao from getting the abortion done. Now when Thao returns home, she tells Tung that she has seen her child and she forgave her, but she left her forever. Tung says he is sorry, and that it's all his fault. Back then, he should have let her know that the doctor told them to get an abortion as their baby had Down syndrome and would be born with disabilities. He then lights an incense stick and says he chose the wrong way to tell her the truth, and she gets shocked to see that it's her who actually died. She doesn't believe it and asks him why he put her portrait here when she is still alive. She thinks it's a dream and tries to wake her up, but when Tun crosses her, she realizes that she is dead for real. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.